five walks as well. He's got about 20 plus friends and family there to watch. Chicago, by the way, needing a big bounce back effort after Saturday's 11th inning meltdown when all they needed was one out for a win. Batter, the 1 0. Ground ball back to Mulholland. He's got it. Throw it. Oh! Off the glove of three. A throwing error. And the Astros have beaten the Cubs. That was a heartbreaker, but Kerry Wood breaking some hearts in the bottom of the second. Again, struck out 20 Astros back on the 6th of May. And he struck out looking on Astros. He got a Lou looking at a breaking ball. Then to this next at bat, this is what makes him so tough. Well, we really saw how special he is today, Carl. A bounce back after that last night. He hit 98 on the gun. His all good fastball, folks, by Craig Biggio. Great slider, curveball. He threw a 3 2 change up to Billy Spires in the eighth inning that was should have been illegal. All right, here's Bergman, and he wasn't bad either. Sosa goes chasing, then in the fourth, scoreless Sosa back at the plate. And Sammy has delivered his 47th home run. 1 0 Cubs as he goes over the wall. Then in the 11th, bases loaded. Two down for Manny Alexander. They've already had one heartbreak in this series, where they have another. Tied at one, Manny slaps it to right. Morandini scores. Grace allegedly ran right through the stop sign, and he was out. 2-1 Cubs, bottom 11. Here comes Houston. Beck, Alou, hit hard, but right at Blouser at short. And Rod Beck gets the save. Sammy and the Cubs. Win by a final score of 2-2-1. Two, two, and the Cubs, of course, enter the day. Nine behind Houston in the standings, so they move up the game there. Cardinals anymore. Home run records certainly are. Boy, Jason Kendall's really good at getting hit by pitches. Dung by Matt Morris there. 24th time he's been hit. It's one nothing Bucks. 2-2 two, two to McGuire. Strike three. Francisco Cordova was rolling along. I mean, it's rare you see cheese like that thrown by. Oh, absolutely. The nasty sidearm fastball from Cordova. 4-1 Bucks with two down in the bottom of the ninth. One on and McGuire standing by. Brian Jordan to second. Womack has to field here. And maybe the runner uh, sort of screwed up the throw to first. In that case, here's McGuire. John Lieber, thanks for playing. And second pitch. Oh, nasty. So we got him with two sliders. And what does he do? High cheese by McGuire. And Big Mac set down. Cordova, 123 pitches, 75 were strikes. He falls one out short of his cuts it down by a run. After a Coomer RBI single, he had trouble in the first. Todd Walker didn't hit the ball, but he got hit. Then Ochoa gets walked. 2 0 Twins. Walker, by the way, 0 for 3 in the game. He's still hitting 340. It's 4 0 in the fourth. Avery gets wild here. Nixon scores. Lawton would later hit an RBI double. He went 4 for 5 in the game, and Avery gave up six runs on nine hits. Eric Milton didn't do that here. No, nah, matter of fact, he had no hitter through the fourth inning. But he, a Jimmy Key like performance with every really special stuff. Look at this. See, the rest of the ball on the fastball. Up fastball on the outside corner. Little the curveball. That's the only one he threw there. Fastball away with a lot of light on. It and then right on the inside corner to Mo, he painted both sides of the plate, and he gets Troy O'Leary on a really nasty pitch to hit it back to the mound. Great performance. He took a no hitter into the seventh inning. Jason Verite, here is your first hit over the head of Todd Walker. Milton gives up two runs in the seventh. The Twins hang on though and win by a final of 6 3. All being opposed by Jeffrey Jr. Blue Jays took full advantage of his slow delivery, Peter. Well, absolutely. Here, Jose Canseco on second takes off, steals. That's a good pitch to throw on, but he's so slow to the plate. Jose steals with ease, and Jose Cruz knocks him in. There's a base hit to center field. Probably would have scored anyway, but that's the point. They stole four bases off Juden. And here, Cruz, who's really played well since he came back, stole second. And that set up another run. And Tony Fernandez single him in. Three of the four runs they got off Juden were the result of their base running. So we go to the seventh. The Blue Jays are up 6-1. Carpenter doesn't match Clemens when it comes to strikeouts, but he has some serious stuff. Glaus got this one to go over the fence. His first major league home run. The Angels are within three at 6-3, but here comes Carpenter and Jim Edmonds facing some high heat. And after Clemens' performance on Saturday, he said he had never seen anybody pitch him or the rest of the tribute. Wells does with a three on his cap. Threes are wild because it's in the top of the third with the Yanks up three zip that Roberto Kelly, the former Yankos, the other way for a two-run home run. And then in the fifth, 
this one also leaves. Tenth of the year, it's 5-4. He knows the part, but he played there. Well, he does. Of course, the man traded for Paul O'Neill. Wells did not have that really good, sharp command today. He had the ball up. Roberto Kelly's a good, high fastball hitter there. You see, he hits the ball out over the plate. He didn't have that fastball running on to either right-handers or left-handers. Kelly was able to extend it, hit it out of the ballpark. Then in the sixth, big play here. McLemore to third. Look at Brocious, bare hand, and he got him at first. To the ninth, two down, bases loaded with Mariano Rivera on the hill. Will Clark, and this is such a tough play. You can't appreciate the play that Jeter makes here. So we go to the bottom of the ninth with one down and a chance to Bernie to be a hero. It'll be an 0-1 to Bernie. Swung on, and there it goes to deep right. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Upper deck. Ball game over. Bernie goes boom. They did it a few times. It seems appropriate that on the day they celebrate the 50th anniversary of his passing, it is a walk-off home run that wins it. Ho-hum. Francisco 5-0 against him this year. Jeff Kent having a huge second half. He goes off the bottom of the wall. It scores Stan Javier. That made it 3-1. Giants and Kent goes 2-4 for four with a couple of runs batted in. Giants pitching in the 6, up 3-2. Oral. Got Ryan Jackson with two down. Dunwoody staring at that pitch. In the 8th, Still 3-2 for the Giants. First and third, one down. John Johnstone relieving. He high cheese past Cangelosi, and then he strikes out Dunwoody. Johnstone strikes out the side. Giants win by a final of 3-2. Hershiser Peter gets his ninth win. How huge is he going to be? Well, Top two in game one. Kevin Brown and Jeremy Burnitz. Watch the hustle by Brown to get over to first for the out. And that is your National League's best defensive team. Then Brown with the bases loaded. Wally Joyner and Ruben Rivera score, so the pitcher provides a 2-0 lead for himself. Same score, Brewers hitting us so far. Jeff Jenkins, strike three. No hitter through five in the sixth against Bobby Hughes. Now his fastball was just moving everywhere. Then look at he locates it on the outside corner, and then comes back to Mark Newfield with his slider. There's no chance. He had no hits through six. In the seventh, still intact, Burnitz. And there's your hit. Finally breaks it up with a single up the middle. Remember, Brown did have a no-hitter in his career. The no-hitter lasts for six and two-thirds as a Marlin to beat the Giants. Here he paints the outside corner, double digits and strikeouts. 11 strikeouts, in fact, ties a career high. Comes against Darren Dreyford. Two on, no score. He's swinging at something low. Dreyford, nine strikeouts in seven innings. Seventh inning, Roger Cedeno against Denny Nagel. Five, four, and three, and the Powerball is 29. Scoreless through seven. Eighth inning, Nagel against Eric Young. He's going to get his name in the paper. Fourth of the year, Dodgers up one nothing. Show them what they've won. A Major League Baseball game, Dryford held Atlanta just one hit in seven innings before coming out for a pitch. Arizona, the Diamondbacks and the Mets, Sadeo Nomo. Strikes out Matt Williams, but Mike Piazza's throw to get Travis Lee sails into center field. Andy Fox scores one, I think, D-backs. Bottom five, 2-1 Arizona. Bases loaded. The Mets defense lets Nomo down. Matt Williams to Ray Ordonez. Carlos Baerga, and it stops there. Two-run score, 4-1 Arizona. 4-1 Arizona, top six, Mike Piazza. To a former teammate, Bernard Gilkey, Devon White. Devo gets it. Omar Dahl appreciates the defense. Arizona wins it by the final of six. Junior may be thinking of what's going on with his buddy oh, at umpire. the PGA Championship, Tiger Woods. Here he got Junior pitch where he will. Well, James Baldwin has gotten better and better as the season went along. Yeah, it's good little giddy up on that fastball. Junior swings through it. Another good high fastball there. And then he splits a good off-speed pitch. I mean, he's going to get anybody out in that situation. The eighth inning. I mean, maybe he's a little bit anxious, but they're behind in the game. He's trying to get them back into it. He swings with a pitch out of the strike zone and grounds out. Just being human. Top seven. Scores tied at three. Ray Durham with a man on second, and Durham goes right back up the middle. Mike Cameron, who came into pinch run. We got the wheels working. He comes plate with the Sox go up 4-3, and they win 5-3. And no, Junior's buddy, Tiger Woods, and Mark O'Meara is all. Strikeout here. One, and it's Scott Spezio goes down swinging. Ed Sprague. Checks out two. A career high, 10 strikeouts for Flory. In the fifth, three nothing. Oakland's got men on first and third. Miguel Tejada, line drive. One, six, 
four, three. Give him an assist. And as Peter pointed out when we were watching the highlight earlier, hockey players use that deflection to score goals. Look at professional hitter match there. Speaking of hockey players. Exactly. And the Canadian goes off the face of the roof. They cut it to 6-4, Flory. Please, fellas, hang on for me. Ben Grieve and great job by Todd Jones there. And the Tigers hang on and win 6-4. To go with the 10 Ks, five hits and eight in the third. His long to left, David Justice will score to tie it at three. Indians would get two more and take a 5-3 lead. And Scott Kamenicki will not get the win. Two on for Eric Davis. 30-game hitting streak intact, but in trouble. Steve Reed gets Eric Davis with cheese. Still 5-3 Indians. In the ninth, two outs. Bases loaded for Rafael Palmero against Mike Jackson. First pitch swinging. Brian Giles makes the grab. Indians win it by the final of 5-3 in an effort to relate. Yes, to lay a yard work. Off Jamie Wright, his first career grand slam, and it looked like he hit it with one hand. In the bottom of the eighth, it's H3. Got the tickets a few months ago. Oh, I'm happy about that now. All right, same inning. The pinch hitter is Jeff Reed. A grand slam off Metallico, his second pinch hit home run of the year. Saw the wind. It's 8-7. Next batter, Daryl Hamilton. Watch this play by Roland. Five grand slams. What a stop by Roland. All you can do is shake your head at the performance that guy puts up on the field, at the plates. Great glove work for him, and the Phillies take care of Colorado by a final score of 8-7. to seven. Bobby Abreu goes 2-3 for three with a home run. The mound this got a little defensive help. F.P. Santangelo hit it about as far as he can. Look at this play by Sanders, who uses the wall, his shoulder, and then his bare hand to hang on. Then it's Santangelo catching the ball. Well, Carl, of course, the Rondell White out. The whole outfield's out of position. F.P. makes so an interesting catch, but he throws to the cutoff man. He doesn't notice. Reggie Sanders could have easily been doubled off. And then it cost them two runs to put them down five to one. Expos have some defensive problems. Here's Reggie needing a home run for the cycle, and he lost the old tire. No cycle for him, but he says, make no mistake about it, I was trying to hit a home run the last time up. Expos have lost their first six.